with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk call the roll, please? Commissioner Look. Here. Commissioner Brastad. Here. Commissioner West. Here. Commissioner Schulte. Here. Commissioner Meisner. Here. Commissioner Gamash. Commissioner Gamash, do we have you on WebEx? Here. Can you hear me? Now we can, yes. He's here. here. Thank you. Commissioner Reinert. Here. Perfect. We are all present and accounted for. Uh, one via WebEx. And next we will look for a motion to approve tax claims and abatements. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Brasted. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner West. Any discussion? Seeing or hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Hold on one second, please. Is this a roll call? Yes, it is. No, it's not my mistake. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a roll call vote. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. That item passes. Next, we'll move to item five on your agenda. Consider accepting the regular claims paid over $500 and purchase card claims paid for the period ending December 4th of 2020. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Look. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Reinert. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. And that item passes. Next, we will look for approval of the minutes of December 3rd, 2020 and December 4th, 2020 County Board meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Meisner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Brasted. I do have one correction <clears throat> on the minutes for December 3rd. Get to that here real quick. Uh, under those present, it lists Commissioner Gamash as present at the beginning of the meeting and also has him joining at 604. I believe that Gamash should, should say Reinert because Reinert is not listed there. Okay. Thank you. So a correction on that uh, present from Gamash to Reinert. Uh, is that correction okay with the motioner and seconder? Yes. Mm -hmm. Terrific. So we have amended motions, of our, an amended motion for the minutes of the 3rd, December 3rd, and as printed for December 4th. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone, anyone opposed? <clears throat> Minutes are adopted. Next, we will move on to Chair's remarks. We have two items under Chair's remarks today, the first of which is to recognize Jam Hops <clears throat> Gymnastics Factory, which has a location in Ham Lake and another in Anoka, for being named the Dream Big Small Business of the Year. Commissioner Brasted, please tell us more about this special honor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Jam Hops Gymnastics Factory was one of more than 700 applicants for the Dream Big Small Business of the Year Award, which was presented at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Big Week for Small Business Virtual Summit in early October. This award recognized Jam Hops for exemplifying the spirit of innovation, entrepreneurship, and individual initiative. Jam Hops impressed the judges with demonstrated success and leadership in business growth, innovative strategies, community engagement, and employee relations. From what I've heard over the years, this is a great place to work and their employees feel well taken care of and cared about. Jam Hops was founded in 1997 and has grown immensely since that time. It is now one of the larger employers in our area. This business has been transforming the lives of children through its athletic and academic programs, and Jam Hops has a strong focus on giving back to the community, which is exemplified through its donation of 100% of the proceeds from its open gym passes to local nonprofit organizations. 
Jam Hops also encourages food shelf donations, as children who bring 10 items to a local food shelf get a free open gym pass. Through this initiative, Jam Hops has donated $20,000 this past year, and $110,000 has been donated since the program started. Additionally, Jam Hops often donates birthday parties for local fundraising events and has given nearly $72,000 in scholarships just this past year to families in need. Children who participate in Jam Hops programs take time to clean up parks, they perform at local nursing homes, and they even make blankets to distribute to the homeless. To say that this business, owned by Brenda Nolby, is deserving of this award would be an understatement. There's a reason Jam Hops was selected to receive this award ahead of hundreds of other applicants. It's because Jam Hops has an overwhelmingly positive, far-reaching impact on children, their families, their employees, and countless community members and organizations. We should be proud to have Jam Hops in our community, and I know I am. Brenda Noby is joining us via WebEx, so I'd like to invite her to say a few words about her business's most recent award. Brenda? <clears throat> Thank you, Julie. Um, such kind words, I'm kind of choked up. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, it was very exciting to win this award. Um, with this particular award, $25,000 came to Jam Hops right before, pretty much right before we were shut down again. So we will be putting that to good years, good use as we get through this next little struggle here. Um, but thank you so much um, to all of you for recognizing Jam Hops. Uh, I have to acknowledge my staff who are really the ones that that put in, put in the hard work. They're there every day. They're servicing our, our customers, our families, our kids. And I'm extremely proud of the work that they do. Well, thank you so much for the impact you have on our community. Um, it's nice to be able to uh, see you in the community on a regular basis. And <laughs> we see each other at church. And um, Brenda has just done a fabulous job with her company. And through thick and thin is, is finding a way to make things work. So thank you so much. Thank you for being here, Brenda. Thanks. Well, thank you, Commissioner Brastad, and congratulations to Jam Hops. <clears throat> Brenda Nolby and Jam's, Jam Hops have been recognized by several organizations over the years, and the well-deserved accolades just keep coming. The awards given to Jam Hops are a testament to the vital role this business plays in our community. Thank you again. Thank you. Our next item today is to recognize a local resident who has spent the better part of 20 years advocating for the homeless by drawing on his connections in the faith community to provide aid to those who are struggling to obtain even basic necessities. For this item, I'm going to call on Commissioner Meisner to share some information. Commissioner Meisner. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and it is so lovely to celebrate during these uh, challenging times. So Fridley resident Bill Jehorek is actually known as the Sock Santa. So in 2000, he and um, a bunch of parishioners went to homeless shelters, and, and Bill actually asked, what is it that you need here? And the answer was socks. So in the state of Minnesota, the winters are cold and long here. Uh, many of our homeless suffer from terrible wound in their, in their feet and infections. So since 2000, he has every year been doing a sock drive and has collected to date over 100,000 pairs of socks. Um, they have been distributed throughout the metro area. And um, I believe, too, that his, his goal was to collect, I want to say, 20 miles of socks. And he's pretty gosh darn close. It's like 5,200 pairs of socks equals one mile. So uh, thank you so much, Bill, for all of your efforts and your, and your continued efforts. It doesn't sound like you're going to stop anytime soon. And special thanks, too, to Ben Harris and Kelly Jehorek, who shared the good work of Fridley resident um, Bill Jehorek. Thank you. Well, thank you, Commissioner Meisner, for sharing that account of Mr. Jehorek's good deeds for the last two decades. The amount of socks he has collected for the years is truly impressive, and those donations do more than simply warm and protect the feet of the homeless 
They provide people who are struggling at who are struggling affirmation that many members of their community care about them. You know, it is a little interesting that he wanted to collect that many miles of socks and that he's, you know, it's 5,200 socks and a sock goes on a foot and there's 5,280 feet in a mile. So somehow we're 80 feet short here, but I have a feeling Bill will make that up. Uh, sorry, that's probably mixing metaphors inappropriately. Um, with that, that does conclude our chair's remarks, and I will ask you all now to go to your additional agenda where we will have a management committee report followed by property records and taxation committee report. We will start with Commissioner West. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the first item is approving contract C008186. It's a lease agreement with HLP LLC for the Ham Lake License and Passport Services Center in Ham Lake. It is for a five-year period from January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2025 with one five-year extension option. I'll move it. And there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Reinert. Is there any further discussion? I would just comment that this will be going um, before the library board on Monday evening, I believe. Or perhaps not, this is the license center. The next one will be going before the library board. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. That item passes. Item B. The second item is contract C0008187. It's a lease agreement with HLP LLC for the North Central Library Space and Offices in Ham Lake. It is uh, for a five-year period, December 1st, 2020 through November 30th, 2025, and it has a five-year extension option as well. And this will go before the library board on Monday night at their next meeting. And one of the uh, exciting things that's going on is there's a new owner of the building and he is making huge improvements and uh, making a much better place and fixing things that need to be fixed. And I think our patrons and our employees will be very happy to be working there. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Brasted. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Meisner. I will make just one quick correction to the verbal record. Uh, you said that it was a five-year extension. It is five one-year extensions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For those that may be watching or listening. Uh, with that, any further comments? Uh, Commissioner Reinert, then Commissioner Meisner. Yeah, I just want to bring up the fact, because, you know, a lot of people don't see what goes on with boards that we have. And, um, you know, when the, uh, uh, this topic was brought up with the library board, um, there were some people on that board that weren't so happy about the uh, uh, terms of the, the lease, and uh, that then uh, prompted staff to further negotiate. There was um, also, you know, 20-some thousand dollars that was going to be folded back into the lease for uh, leasehold improvements. And uh, as a result of the library board and their concerns and wanting to have more negotiation done on that lease, staff did that and we ended up in a better place. So um, just want to let the public know that these boards that we have and there's uh, good work being done and people looking out for tax, do tax dollars and taxpayers. Thank you, Commissioner Reinhardt. Commissioner Meisner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Commissioner Reinhardt, for fleshing that out as well. I mean, the library board has a um, unique relationship with, with the full county board, so I appreciate that. And just, just a question, too, and too so we're, we're voting on this now here at the full board, and then the library board, though, obviously has been discussing this, so that it's just, it's just um, making it official then for Monday night for the library board. And then once they vote on it, then it's... Yeah, Final. My, my comment would be hopefully it's just a rubber stamp, but they, they were part of the negotiations. They laid out some criteria. Perhaps some of them changed their mind. Perhaps they didn't get exactly what they wanted, so we're not sure. We okay. would hope that they find this uh, amenable. I, I think they have a preliminary approval, but I would turn to D. Goodman to respond. And then uh, just a follow-up question then, too. So then both boards do need to approve of it. Yes. For, okay. 
Yes, thank you, Commissioner D. Goodman, Deputy County Administrator. So this lease became before the library board two times for much discussion. Um, at the last library board, they approved it, but with conditions that I needed to go back to Jason, the landlord, um, and come up with some better solutions, which we did do. Um, after that, we followed up with an email to all the library board to let them know of all the changes, what was um, finally committed in the lease, and they did approve it. It gets approved here today by the county board, and then because the library board meeting happens after, it will go through them as an informational item because they did approve it already. Uh, okay, thank you. Very good, thank you for that clarification. Anything else to come before this question? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. And that item passes. Commissioner West, does that conclude that your that committee report? That concludes my report. Thank you very much. We'll move on then to the Property Records and Taxation Committee report, and we'll turn to Commissioner Meisner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Property Records and Taxation Committee met on December 10th, and I have um, two action items. The first one is uh, an A and B, so uh, they go together. But the committee recommends the county board adopt the following resolutions related to tax forfeited property. Resolution 2020 PRT9 for 2020 tax forfeit classification of non-conservation property for land sale purposes. Uh, so there was this year about a total, I believe it was a total of nine parcels in total, which is actually less than a lot of past years. And this is um, very standard to actually reclassify, there's only two classifications, conservation and non-conservation. So that's what this is for. And then the part B then, um, which goes in partnership with this, is then to request the Department of Natural Resources to approve for sale uh, the tax forfeit classification list, which is part A, the nine parcels. So I will go ahead and move that. There is an offer of the resolutions, both of them before you, resolution A and B, which are 2020 PRT 9 and 2020 PRT 10. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And that vote is unanimous. Thank you. And our second action item is the committee recommends the county board approve the following application for repurchase of tax forfeited lands. It is a pin number 35-31-22-22-006. And that is in the city of Lino Lakes. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Motion by Commissioner Reiner. Is there a second? Second. second. Commissioner Look, is there further discussion? Seeing and hearing no further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That item passes. The Next. rest. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ahead, Chair. <laughs> the rest are informational items, but I, again, I always like to share that for the public. Uh, so we did get another election update, and um, actually, at that particular meeting, the League of Women Voters, ABC, so Anoka, Blaine, and uh, Coon Rapids, they actually came to give um, formal thanks for our elections department. So I would like to thank them for their time to recognize uh, our, our elections area. And then the committee, we was also updated on, there's a contract out for um, proposal for this, the city of Centerville for assessment services. And another update on the PRT Tyler migration project, which continues to, uh, to move forward. And that concludes my report. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Meisner. And if you would all turn back to your regular agenda now, we'll do the committee reports there, starting with the transportation committee report. Uh, I can tell you we met on December 2nd at the Bunker Hills Activity Center at 8.30. And we have a few items for you today. Um, first, the committee recommends approval to enter into an agreement with HDR Incorporated for consultant design services for the rehabilitation and replacement of the Coon Creek Boulevard Bridge over the Coon Creek in the city of Coon Rapids. The rehabilitation and widening of the bridge at Viking Boulevard over the Rum River in the city of Oak Grove. Is there a motion to approve? Move it. 
Motion by Commissioner Look. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Brasted. Does would anybody like a uh, information from our county engineer? Uh, Commissioner Meisner looks like she might want to. So, Joe, would you bring us a little further into this item? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, fellow committee members here. Um, my name is Joe McPherson. I'm the Transportation Division Manager and County Engineer. Happy holidays to everybody. Uh, this information here, action item relates to design contract for both of these bridges. Um, as we looked at our program, our highway program over the next couple of years, we, uh, we decided that for efficiency purposes, we thought we'd lump these two together and have one contract with one consultant. So that's why you see the two bridges in there in the two different projects. Further discussion, Commissioner Meisner. Comment and then um, one question. So, uh, the the, co the comment was just I was surprised that one of the uh, companies did did not give you a quote, and I only say that just because I I just figured that um, work would be would be wanted. So that was just a comment. And then my my question is, it was really close between these two bids. I mean, what is that less than a thousand dollars? So what I'm just curious what the uh, criteria was then to do one over the other. Sure. Yeah, Mr. Chair, Commissioner, so great question. They were very close, and so that's actually a good sign that our request for proposals was pretty tight, and the description and the scope of work was written correctly. That one there, we went with the uh, low bid, which is typically what we do, because um, as a group, as a highway group, we look at different consultant teams and who can deliver certain types of projects. All three of the teams that you see before you on that action item, actually all of them can deliver this type of project. So we looked at it as all three are qualified. There was no standing or glaring issues with any of them. There was one, as you mentioned, that did not submit a quote or a proposal. And I think the reason for that is they're not, road work isn't their bread and butter. They focus mainly on bridges. So likely they would need to team up with another consultant. So they may have just looked past this one and not submitted a quote. But they were very close. All three teams are good, so we went with the low bid. Any further discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. And that item passes. Next is under Commute Solutions. The committee recommends approval of a subrecipient grant agreement with the Metropolitan Council for the period of January 1st, 2021 through December 31st of 2021 for the congestion mitigation and air quality funds for Anoka County's transportation management organization known as Commute Solutions. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Meisner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner West. Questions? Commissioner Meisner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just my only question is, so this is a grant where we're receiving funds, and so my question then is, why isn't there a, an amount tied to it? Is it just open-ended, or? We'll turn to the county engineer. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, Commissioner. So great question. This is actually a grant that we've received since 2004, and it helps support <laughs> our Commute Solutions uh, person, Megan Matson. And so we receive 80% of the funding for her position. We have to match that with 20%, which we're currently using transportation tax to do. But uh, the, the amount is roughly $160,000 to the tune of that, and then we match it with 20% uh, county funds. So I didn't include that in there because it is, it's kind of a, that'll be determined as we finalize the budget oh, okay. and all that type of stuff. Okay, perfect, so just to reiterate, so it's, it's just because this isn't an actual final number that it's not in here. Correct. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Reiner. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. And that item passes unanimously. Uh, the rest on the regular agenda here is information only. Uh, I do have a transmission transportation chair's report that I can bring to you now. Uh, and as the chair of the committee, I am asking you to consider approving a resolution authorizing Anoka County to enter into advanced construction agreement 
with the Minnesota Department of Transportation for the reconstruction of Foley Boulevard between East River Road and Coon Rapids Boulevard in the city of Coon Rapids. Is there an offer of the resolution? So moved. I heard a number of offers here. I'm gonna take Commissioner Gamash's offer. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Uh, does anybody want an explanation of this at all? It's just, uh, it's, it's really self-explanatory. It's just, uh, but Commissioner Meisner. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And as you can see, and this is the project where we're in partnership or, or actually the city of Coon Rapids is, is leading this. Correct. Joel. Uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioner, so we're actually leading this project. This is for the Foley Railroad Grade Separation Project, which takes off next year. And the reason for this uh, grant agreement is um, because the funding mechanism, the federal funds are set up through multiple years, we have to do an advanced construct agreement, which helps kind of, you know, um, solidify the fact that the county will pay for the funds until the federal funds become available, which should be available pretty soon after the project starts. So, apologies, and clearly, I think I was confused with a different, um, a different project. So, in, in your defense, Commissioner Meisner, this ties directly into the East River Road. That's 610 the one I was ramp. Of. Yes. I mean, the, the roads will literally tie together at these two projects, and Coon Rapids is leading that one. We're leading this one. Thank you. That is exactly the way. As soon as Joe started talking, I'm like, okay, yep, thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. And that item passes. Uh, that does conclude my chair report for the Transportation Committee, and we will now move on to the Human Services Committee report, and we'll turn to Commissioner Brasted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Our Human Services Committee did meet on December 10th, and we've got a few um, items here. We're going to take the first two as consent, and I will move those. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Reinert. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. That item passes. Great. Then we would recommend the county board enter into contract C00081. 2-2, which is an amendment with Blue Stone Physician Services for COVID testing and vaccination administration through December 31st, 2021. We're already working with them and we're just extending this and preparing to um, do the vaccinations. I'll move it. A motion by Commissioner West, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Meisner. Is there further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. That item passes. Recommend the county board enter into the following employment contract amendments at existing rates, extending the term through June 30th, 2021. And they are contracts with Achieve, Opportunity Partners, Opportunity Services, and with RISE. But due to COVID and some limited services, uh, we just need to extend this. And I'm happy to move that. There is a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Reinert. Is there further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. And that item passes. Next item would be recommending the county board enter into contract C0008281, which is a renewal with Lutheran Social Services for 33 guardianship conservative conservatorship services in the amount of $110,880 plus 
dollars for legal fees associated with these services from January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021. Contract maximum is $117,600. And we've had the need to increase. Um, we've had 28 clients, and we need to increase that to 33. And I'll move that. There's a motion before us. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Meisner. Is there further discussion or questions? Seeing and hearing none, we will have a roll call vote. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. And that item passes. And recommend the county board apply for and accept UCARE Foundation funding in an, in an amount up to $100,000 for housing assistance and COVID mitigation from January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021. And we're very grateful for this opportunity from UCARE. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Meisner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner West. Is there further discussion? Commissioner Meisner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, ju just commentary. I, I too, I wish them luck and I hope that we get it. Um, one of the unique things about this particular foundation grant is that they're really focused on health equity. And I think one of the things that COVID-19 has certainly revealed is equities across the board. Mm -hmm. This one obviously would be focusing on housing assistance, but I just wanted to, again, express my gratitude as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Meisner. Further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. And that item passes. Recommend the county board enter into contract renewal with Summit Food Service, LLC, for meals and services at the community corrections institutions per with per meals costs ranging from two dollars two point six one two to three point three three six based on meal counts from January first, twenty twenty one to December thirty first, twenty twenty one. We've worked with this contractor for a while now. And due to COVID and the populations in these institutions, um, we're trying to be flexible to uh, keep them as a contractor. So I would move that amendment. There's a motion before us. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Commissioner West. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. And that item passes. And next we have the economic assistance bills, resolution 2020-HS22, which I'm happy to offer. There's a resolution before us. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, it's a roll call vote. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. That resolution passes. <laughs> and my last item for this committee is resolution 2020 HS23, which is addressing the Anoka County Community Corrections 2021-2022 Comprehensive Plan, which I'm happy to offer. Resolution is before us. Is there any further discussion? Commissioner Meisner. Uh, thank you, Mr. J just commentary. I, I mean, we, we spoke about this in the actual meeting, but this comprehensive plan is, uh, well, in fact, very comprehensive. And so we really appreciate the information. And I know that there was um, a fee addition that I can't remember. I can't remember if Dylan said that it would be here today or if we if it was in there already. But that, that was my only other comment about it. Thank you, Commissioner Meisner. Uh, Commissioner Brasted, any 
recollection? Um, yes, that that fee is approved by the um, Community Corrections Advisory Board, so they have to approve it, but it's included in that comprehensive plan. It is included, plan. okay, thank it you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Brasted. Commissioner Meisner, any further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Brasted. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. That item passes. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Brasted. Mm. Next, we're gonna to move to the Information Technology Committee report, better known as the IT Committee. And we will turn to Commissioner Gamash via WebEx. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The IT committee met on December 10th, and uh, the, uh, we had one action item. The IT committee recommends the county board approve um, purchase from Envoy LLC DBA Intelligent uh, in amount of $455,360.49 the change order of $45,536.05 for a total not to exceed $500,896.54 for SIP, which is the Session Initiation Protocol uh, Telephonic Services. This agreement is subject to the final completion of content and form by, county attorney, by the county attorney's office. Um, I cannot see the crowd, so I'm assuming Susan Brickland is in attendance today. Um, she wants to add more to this. this uh, PRI technology is responsible for carrying voice transmissions between a voice network and a caller. PRI has been industry standard for many years in providing telecommunications services and is still required for some county information transmission. Uh, the county recently renewed a two-year agreement with TDS Metrocom for using this type of service where still needed. Uh, SIP will provide many benefits compared to the previous technology. The county will have the flexibility to quickly expand or contract cap capacity, uh, often in a matter of hours, and SIP provides a high level of resiliency and local and load balancing uh, between the location, helping to ensure that the reliability and the quality of phone system and of our phone system integrity. Uh, I believe this, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, if uh, Susan is there, this was in our budget, uh, but it is just for a certain period of time because of, I both, if I'm not mistaken, this is the one that relates to our live, or excuse me, our elevator systems and uh, others that we have to keep intact until the new system uh, can come up. So uh, is Susan there? Susan is here and we'll turn to her now. Thank you, Commissioner Gabbard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the County Board. I'm Susan Vreeland, the County's IT Director. Commissioner Gamash, you are correct. And back in October, we brought forward a contract. Um, and first of all, I should start by saying you are correct that this is all within our current operating budget. So back in October, we brought forward a contract to continue um, analog line service here in the county. And that's the technology we currently use right now everywhere for all dial tone service. So that's your telephone at your desk, um, the elevators, alarm service, um, fax machines, which we are pulling away from fax machines and expanding more electronic write fax service, but analog lines currently cover all of that. In October, we brought forward a recommendation for a much smaller <coughs> analog line contract to con um, continue covering where we have to use that service, so still in our elevators, still in our fax machines, et cetera. When I brought that forward, <clears throat> excuse me, at that time, um, I mentioned that we we're going to start bringing forward SIP technology to expand everything else in the county, primarily telephone service, other areas where we could bring in this new technology, and there's a couple purposes for that. Analog service for telephones is going to be going away. We know that. We need to be prepared for it. It's not like flipping a switch. It's going to take a lot of work, and we see that happening in about two years. We need to start shipping away at that when we're not doing our day job, so we want to start moving on that. Um, methodically and, and at the beginning of the year. The other reason for that is analog service is um, it's limited in its flexibility. So right now with our current technologies for email, for file service to get applications, if we have issues with the primary um, electronics or machinery that manage that technology, we can move all of that to another site and that work will continue to happen. You'll still get your email. And we've had that happen and nobody knows it. So that work continues to progress and we wanna do that with our phone service. If something happens to that equipment here, we need to be able to push that out to another site. We can't do that with analog technology. 
Finally, we know that um, we have a number of government agencies throughout this country um, in, in a very um, activity-filled year in the United States that have had um, issues with phone lines being jammed, um, with service not being available because there's so many calls coming in that you call your local government agency and you're getting a busy signal. And in some counties or cities that was happening for days. With this technology, we will have the ability to ramp up phone service as we need it and bring it back down when we need it in a matter of a couple of hours, not weeks. And so all of that flexibility can be built into the current unified communication system we have. We couldn't do that in our own phone system. So this has been on our radar for a long time and now we're at the place where we really want to execute a contract to start um, going down that path. As it relates to the cost, our analog billing um, is shrinking. Um, by a big amount, which will make tracking that billing easier. But the analog service we have right now for the rest of the county, we get about a 400-page bill a month. It's extremely difficult to track when a phone comes on, when a phone comes off. Do we have phone lines that are just out there that we don't even need anymore? With this technology, I will have the ability to very easily, in a system, track what lines are on, what lines are off, what lines can I get rid of. So I actually see this budget line item going down over time with this contract. So in the long run, we're going to recognize a savings here that we can't recognize right now. So for all of those reasons, I think this is the right path. This is a strategic path for the county. Um, and I think we'll see a lot of benefits we just don't see right now. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Meisner, second by Commissioner Gamash. Sorry, Mike, you're, uh, because you're on WebEx, you sometimes get second billing here. <laughs> uh, no problem, no problem. Further discussion, Commissioner Reinert. Yeah, I just have one question, you know, the um, capabilities of digital is obvious, um, but I'm just kind of wondering, uh, is there any capability of analog um, that digital doesn't have? So right now, Commissioner, um, members of the board, there are capabilities for things like, um, I, I spoke to them earlier, but like for elevators, um, for alarm service, there are certain technologies that we still really depend on that and it's, that we have to have it for that this type of service doesn't have right now. There is going to be a change there within the next two years. Um, it's going to be a federal requirement, a lot likely a local requirement that we move everything to that technology. So our alarm systems, again, our elevators, when that change starts to happen, um, there is already a meeting out there with facilities to talk to the city of Anoka about they're already starting to look at when that code requirement changes, the city is going to require the elevators go from analog to this new technology. But right now, the benefit is and the requirement for those types of service, we have to have analog. So we need to keep it there where it has to be and where it needs to be technically, but that is going to all end eventually. Technologies will take over analog completely and have all capability that analog one had, once had. Correct. But what isn't clear, commissioners, is that that's all going to impact us at home, too. Um, and if you have, I have some family overseas that are at an age where they just don't get the whole cell phone thing. So I still have a landline. How is that going to impact, like, home type of service? We don't know, but there will be a change there someday. And in the end, we'll save money as a county. We will. Okay, well, okay thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Meisner. Just uh, my compliments because, you know, this project as well, as well as so many others in IT, the timing that you do this and the proactiveness that you can see what it's going to be looking like and to prepare um, us and your department so it's not a complete, uh, you know, sur not surprise, but just a work overload. So uh, my compliments in, in the timing that you are approaching this as, as well as, like I said, many other projects in IT. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. <clears throat> Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reiner. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. And that item passes unanimously. Commissioner Gamash. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. This, that concludes my report. Uh, we did have one small informational item that was regarding the park and rec management software system. Uh, for the Parks Department, which will bring together all of their um, uh, their abilities to take reservations, to uh, bring the golf course in along with uh, our uh, the campgrounds and things like that. But more, more information on that will be coming as that moves along. But thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gamash. 
Next up, we have the Intergovernmental and Community Relations Committee report, and for that, we will turn to Commissioner Brasted. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We met on December 3rd to review the uh, legislative platform ideas for the 2021 session. It was a long meeting with a, uh, some really good discussion. We came up with 14 um, issues that are laid out in the chart there. Um, there is one that after a little bit of further conversation, and it's regarding the Trunk Highway 65 uh, freeway conversion, we had uh, had some discussion about and voted on to have it be county supports with others. And after a little bit more of discussion and realizing that we wouldn't be able to list it as a priority on our legislative platform, it's being recommended that we move that from supports with others to actively support. So even though we don't have any specific legislation on Highway 65 that we plan to bring in this upcoming session, um, so that's the, that's the recommended change. I, I will as a process say that uh, we should take a motion to the original grid with an amendment moving that check mark over uh, that way because the only thing before us and in our agenda packet shows the original grid. So I think to fix that properly, we should take an emo a motion on that, a second and then a amendment. An amendment, okay. So is there a motion to approve the original um, grid that's before you for our legislative platform? Move um, to approve. I have a motion by Commissioner Reinert. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner West. Commissioner Meisner. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, and I just, because uh, th this was, um, I mean, the whole list, we did have a, a lot of thorough conversation, and I just wanted to make sure that I understood by changing this over, because like you said, Commissioner Brasted, so we don't, we don't currently have a particular piece of legislation, but does this change anything of the current projects where, where we are truly in partnership that we're not leading, this doesn't now switch us over to where Anoka County is suddenly leading. And I'm thinking of uh, 99th and 109th in particular, where there's some conversations going around that with jo um, joint par partnerships. I think before I even answer your question, I think we should have an amendment on the floor to the current motion. I'll make that amendment. Okay, so the amendment is to move Trunk Highway 65 freeway conversion to yes, lobby for it mm -hmm. category or actively lobbying and out of the category of supports. Um, and then to directly answer your question, this really doesn't change much of what we're going to do other than if legislation were to come forward, we would acti actively lobby for it. Um, we would also list it as a priority of ours that Highway 65 is our priority or a priority and that we wanna work with both MnDOT and the cities on that corridor to actively lobby for that. Okay. Well, you know, we have that fireplace in the... Commissioner Reiner, will you accept the amendment? What do we have? Oh, is that noise coming? Really from? Okay. Uh, yes, I do accept that amendment. Okay, so that's a friendly amendment onto the motion uh, to move ahead with the amendment as stated. We have the original motion before us with the friendly amendment accepted. Is there further discussion? Commissioner Brasted. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just see Karen Skepper is here, and it looks like she's got some input. Um, so I'd like to hear from her. Thank Welcome, you, Karen. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Um, there are several items on our brochure that we produce every year that we don't have immediate language for, but we have it in our back pocket in the event uh -huh. it should come to a point where we can introduce something. Um, so that's what we would be doing with this. We'll have it listed on our brochure. We'll always be in close contact with Highway, and if there's an opportunity, we will very quickly turn around something. But we'll know that this is a priority of the boards and be able to move forward with it. Thank you, Karen. A point of order, Mr. Commissioner. Chair, um, I, I believe, though, also the uh, seconder of the motion does have to also accept. Accept. It's accepted by the seconder as well. So the it is a friendly amendment onto the motion. And the motion is before us. Is there further discussion? Seeing and hearing none. Um, and just a reminder to the public, we did workshop this at length. It wasn't uh, randomly put together or 
with any haste for that matter. There was lots and lots of discussion, robust, and this is the list we came up with, and we'll be working on behalf of the Anoka County citizens at the state legislature to, to get some of this stuff done. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone, anyone opposed? That will pass unanimously. And that concludes my IG report. The Intergovernmental and Community Relations Committee report has ended. We will move on to the Parks Committee report and we will turn to Commissioner Gamash. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Parks Committee met on December 1st and we have four board actions uh, before you today. The uh, committee recommends the county board ratify the ratification of three Anoka County contracts. Uh, one for, uh, one is C0008328 for Kiwi, C0008329 for Rum River, C00833 for Rice Creek, for the 20, uh, 21 snowmobile grant and aid agreements with the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. Uh, this, uh, the Parks Department has worked for over 33 years and has acted as the local sponsor uh, for these snowmobile clubs in Anoka County that provide and maintain our snowmobile trails. The three snowmobile clubs are in Anoka County, uh, Kiwi, Rum River, and Rice Creek, and uh, they do one heck of a great job. If you've never been able to ride on them, you should take a shot this winter uh, when and if we get some snow. Uh, but they do a great job of, of keeping these trails open and uh, making for great runs all across um, Anoka County, and I will move this. There's a motion before us to approve all three contracts. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Brasted. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brasted. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. That item passes. Item number two, uh, Mr. Chair, is the committee recommends the county uh, board uh, to review our, uh, the county board have funding for will be used to assist in Oakland County in preventing and reducing the spread of aquatic invasive species, which is AIS, and to recommend that the county board adopt resolution to support for 2020 PRK 10. We have been doing this now uh, since 2014, or since 2015, like December 2014. And uh, this has been uh, some great things that came through in the 2014 Omnibus Tax Bill, was signed into law by the governor, uh, and uh, it has done some great work all across Nova County, all across the state of Minnesota, actually, to help uh, clean up in certain areas um, any kind of invasive, invasive species. And we have now been working for a number of years with our local uh, lake groups uh, as part of this, where we're able to give a part of the grant out to them and help them do some of the projects that they're working on. Um, it comes to about $134,000 to $140,000 a year for these programs. We do everything from identifying um, uh, local enforcement for police officers to determine training needs, to enforce the laws. Uh, we also look uh, it funds some of the people that sit, sit out at the um, landings to check boats uh, as they come in and out of the different landings all across the all across the county and also to do prevention messaging um, to schools and other environmental groups and, and things like that. So it's been a great program. We want to keep it going uh, as long as we possibly can. And uh, but this is just to approve the uh, money for 2021. Is there an offer of the resolution? Move to approve. The resolution has been offered by Commissioner Reinert. Is there further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. And that item passes. Item number three is uh, the committee recommends to the county board to authorize contract for $198,500 with the Nopa Conservation District and the county contract C0008114 for cedar revetment erosion control along the Rum River. Uh, the Parks Department um, has submitted a funding request to the Conservation Park, uh, Partners Legacy 
and grant programs as a portion of a large scale conservation project along the Rum River in Norfolk County that includes riverbank stabilization projects on the Rum River, water quality enhancements, and fish and wildlife habitat improvements. The CPL grant will provide stream bank stabilization in eroded areas along the Rum River using cedar revetment. Uh, this is going to be uh, uh, part of a project that we work not only with uh, this group, but also some of the uh, private areas, um, not, not just public entities uh, like the, our own parks or cities, but also with private home and landowners along the creek, along the river as well, to uh, fix up areas that um, are, are in need. Work will begin in the spring of 2021 with completion uh, due no later than July of 2022. Um, again, since they don't give me a camera so I can't scan the audience, I'm assuming that uh, our Parks Director Jeff Perry is in attendance as well today. So if Jeff wants to add anything more, um, I would appreciate that because uh, he's got a lot of information on this subject for sure, if not all the other stuff. Thank you, Commissioner Gamash. We will turn to Jeff Perry, who is in the room. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, uh, members of the board. My name is Jeff Perry, <coughs> Park Director for Noka cool. County. Uh, the only thing I would like to add is this project will stabilize approximately 3,600 linear feet of various projects along the Rum River. And this technology, cedar tree revetments, is uh, designed for moderately eroding sites. It's uh, using uh, native eastern red cedar trees to layer those like shingles along the riverbank to stabilize, improve water quality, and uh, improve wildlife habitat. So. Very important conservation project for Anoka County uh, to protect uh, the beautiful Rum River. Thank you, Jeff. Is there a motion to approve? Mr. Chair, I'll move it. I have a motion by Commissioner Look. Is there a second? Second, second by Commissioner Reinert. Uh, further discussion? I see Commissioner Look and then Commissioner Meisner. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, I know that the it, we kind of structured it as a, as a matching program to match the uh, grant dollars that were coming in. I thought we had matched around $100,000 annually for this. Is this multiple year type of deals or how are we coming up with the 198 or is that additional funds that we would have given to the uh, NOCA Conservation District aside from the match? I guess I'm just trying to do the financials. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner, look, this is part of the overall uh, large-scale Rum River initiative. So um, of that $100,000 contribution by Anoka County towards the larger scale project, uh, 13500 will match these other state funds uh, to total this project amount of $198,500. Uh, in terms of the overall uh, extent of the five-year two-phase project, there are 80 sites that will be addressed along the Rum River. This is addressing approximately 24. Um, so there's uh, both public and private uh, sites that will be addressed as part of the large project that would include approximately seven miles of stream bank. So uh, there's other um, state funds that will be used as part of the large scale project. The conservation partner legacy, which is here, is, is one tier. The other tier uh, is Lassard Sam's Outdoor Heritage Council direct funding, which we were successful in securing $816,000. Mm -hmm. And that money will be focused on the more severe uh, eroding sites. The Clean Water Fund proposal is, is uh, in the uh, proposal phase right now, but that's a larger scale $440,000 uh, ask to uh, the Clean Water Fund. And then of course, the county's bringing uh, approximately $100,000 a year for four consecutive years. Four, right, okay. Thank you. Um, Further discussion? Commissioner Miser. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. J just a question with the, because uh, it's public and private, so for the private homeowners, um, do we need mandatory, I assume, permission, or is this because it's a county project, we, we just do it and we inform the residents? I'm just curious. Jeff. Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner Meisner, great question. Um, we will be soliciting uh, input from private landowners and interest. There's uh, currently a waiting list of over 20 landowners that are interested in doing something on their uh, shoreline. 
they, are, they would be required to bring a 10% match towards the project. The rest of the funding will be provided through those funding sources that I mentioned uh, previously. Okay, okay. Th thank you. Thank you, any further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. <laughs> Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. That item passes. Commissioner Gamash, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The item number four, uh, the committee recommends the county board authorize an amendment to grant agreement SD05733, Noka County contract number C0006651, to increase the grant amount by $41,011.81 to a total of $366,011.81. Uh, the parks farm is able to complete the re re Riverfront Regional Park Improvement Project under the grant amount by $41,011.81. And those funds are eligible for use on other regional parks and trail projects. And the county has requested the, the Metropolitan Council amend the grant agreement to relocate the funds to the Islands of Peace Trail Improvements Project to supplement its budget. The Islands of Peace Project has a few cost overruns due to some additional work that has required for, that was required for the culverts on the emergency access route to the island. And uh, we thought this was a perfect place to put them um, so that we could cover some of those over. And I'll move it. There's a motion before us. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner uh -huh. Meisner. Any further discussion? I would just say for those that don't know geographically exactly where this is, these are two parks that are separated by Highway 694 right along East River Road and the river. So it makes sense to uh, move these dollars from the southern park up to the northern park that needs uh, the current work. Any further discussion? Hearing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. And that item passes. Uh, Mr. Chair, we had uh, two committee action items. One was uh, regarding the 2021 purchase of service agreement for Banfield Lock Center for the Arts. We will be moving forward with that. Uh, we made one small change, uh, and a very small change actually, because we uh, usually make the payments uh, that we, we, we pay $50,000 to them every year for uh, their service at, at the Banfield. And we usually do it in two different payments, one in January and one in uh, June or July, probably half the year, I'm not sure. Um, well, all we did in this agreement was add that um, we're going to have some discussion between now and, and we're gonna make the payment in January and then about 25,000. And then we're gonna have some discussion with uh, Banfield Lock on how things are going um, through the COVID. And then um, approve the payment for half the next, the second part later on. Um, but that was all a part of our agreement. So it's not a big change, it's just kind of a, one more step, we haven't had a real sit down uh, discussion with the Parks Committee and Ben Phil Ox that we're gonna do that uh, just to see how things have been going. Uh, we had two informational items uh, that were uh, um, that were interesting and uh, we're, we provided comments uh, regarding the Rice Creek North Regional Trail Master Plan. As you know, the legislature um, was able to get something into the bonding bill last that was passed and uh, that was gonna help uh, complete uh, a portion of that trail. So we were looking at how that was going to be designed and where it was going to go uh, through the through the Rice Creek uh, Park and, and through the, the, the different parts of the neighborhoods there to get that trail finished. And then finally, uh, through with some discussions from residents and, uh, and from Coon Rapids uh, City Council, uh, we have looked at some possible enhancements to the dog park at Bunker Hills Regional Park. Um, more people are using that dog park every year. We have an agreement with the cities of Andover and Coon Rapids as, as they are partners there with us and they have asked for some of these things as well. And we're gonna look at lighting um, and also looking at possibility of what we can do about um, having some water in the area but for the most part, we're looking at some kind of a, an agreement between the three of us uh, so that uh, we can do this in an efficient way and a, in a cost savings way. And um, 
and, and we just looked at some of the plans there and we'll be in discussion with both the cities to see exactly what it is they, they would want and, and, and pay for. And I don't think uh, Jeff's still there. If I missed anything, Jeff, be sure to um, you know, speak up and add anything. Uh, otherwise, uh, that concludes my report. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner Gamash. And Mr. Perry suggesting you covered it well. He has nothing left to add. So thank you. And we will now turn to Commissioner Brasted in the public safety report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We just have three routine contracts this morning. I would recommend approval and execution of contract C0008331, which is the 2020 Urban Area Security Initiative grant between the state of Minnesota, Department of Public Safety, and Anoka County Emergency Management in the amount of $183,750 and a term of January 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. And I'll move that. There's a motion before us. Is there a second? <clears throat> second. Second by Commissioner West. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Aye. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Meisner? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Reinert? Aye. That item passes. I would recommend approval and execution of the following Anoka County Sheriff's Office contracts. Uh, the first one is the 2021 law enforcement contract with the City of Columbus in the amount of $398,942 and a term of January 1st, 2021 through December 31st, uh, 2021. They are contracting with the Sheriff's Office to include, but not limited to, 12 hours per day of patrol service, five hours per week of community service officer coverage, and 24-hour call and general services. And I'll move that. There's a motion before us. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Reinert. Further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Brastad? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Meisner? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Reinert? Aye. Commissioner Look? Opposed. That item passes. And my last item is approval and execution of the <clears throat> Violent Crime Enforcement Team's 2020 grant contract agreement, amendment number one, with the Minnesota Department of Public Safety, increasing the grant by $235,000 and extending the term to December 31st, 2021. And I'll move that. There is an item before us. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Luck. That was moved by Commissioner Brasted. Further discussion? Commissioner Meisner. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this, this is essentially gaining another year's contract. I mean, it's like identical amounts and, and literally a 12-year addition. Okay. That is my understanding, but we do have an expert in the room that maybe he would like to uh, share with us. Chair and Commissioner, uh, yes, this is uh, typically, we've had this grant since 1996, and uh, we go through a whole application process, usually about every other year. This is the second year of that grant, and so instead of going through the application process, they extended the same amount that we had applied for and received last year by one year. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I was, um, just as a follow-up, just curious why it was an amendment versus just a, a new contract, but then that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Schulte? Aye. Commissioner Meisner? Aye. Commissioner Gamash? Aye. Commissioner Reinert? Aye. Commissioner Look? Aye. Commissioner Brasta? Aye. That item passes. And I would just like to thank Commander First for being here from the Sheriff's Office to handle any questions on public safety today. And that com uh, completes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Brasted. Uh, that completes our committee reports. We will now move to item nine on your agenda, where we'll consider approving a resolution 2020-139 
the appointment of Colleen A. Houtner as library director, uh, contract C-000-8346. Is there an offer of the resolution? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll offer the resolution. The resolution's been offered by Commissioner West. Is there further discussion? Commissioner Meisner. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I, uh, you know, I've been really consistent about um, for the, our top staff positions, posting them, conducting interviews, opening them up. And so I just want to make commentary that I th thank you. Since I've been here, we've done direct appointments on four major department positions. So the fact that we, in fact, opened this up, conducted interviews, I know in large part that was because of the library board as well. Uh, so I, I compliment that. I'm very pleased to see that. Um, also to just kind of recognize that this is a person that came outside of Anoka County because I know the conversation has kind of been to cultivate uh, in-house promotions, which I support, but it is good to also have talent from outside side. Um, and then just to thank the, the staff person who was doing this role in the interim, which is Patty Hetrick. Uh, she did this, what, for the last six or seven months in the middle of a pandemic and presume that she will go back to finance. Uh, and then I just had um, one actual question, too, about the resolution. And maybe this is on all of the resolutions, but the very last resolved it, it says the duties of the library director may be amended at any time in accordance with paragraph VA of the employment agreement without affecting the validity of this resolution. And that just kind of struck me. I don't, I don't know if that's on every, it is on every contract and I just haven't noticed it. Okay. I, I wouldn't say it's on every contract or every resolution, but certainly on a, on a resolution like this, you're saying we can alter the job the duties, description yeah. without defying this resolution. I mean, that's important. Because then, then we'd have to go back and like make a new resolution if, if, if it was finite like that. Right. Okay. Correct. Thank you. That was my only commentary. Thank you. Dee, would you like to share something with us, please? Yes, I would. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, fellow commissioners, I'm Dee Goodman, Deputy County Administrator. Um, so first of all, I do also would like to thank Patty Hedrick. Um, she was our interim um, library director over the past 10 months, and Patty has been able to accomplish many great things um, for our large library department during a really extremely difficult time. And so um, kudos out to Patty, great job. Um, but moving on to my next step, which I'm very excited about, is um, I'd like you to help me in welcoming Colleen Hobner, um, who comes to the county with actually more than 30 years of leadership experience as the new Anoka County Library Director. Colleen has served in various capacities um, for the YMCA, most recently as the Executive Director of the YMCA Greater Twin Cities in New Hope. Some of her duties in that position included managing 250 employees, um, overseeing a $6.6 .6 million budget, mentoring and leading hundreds of volunteers, supervising the creation and development of high quality programs and services, and collaborating with local government, school officials, nonprofit managers, and other community leaders to establish partnerships that strengthen the community. Colleen has held leadership positions on several community boards and committees, including the Robbinsdale School District, the North Memorial Hospital and Clinics Advisory Committee, New Hope Business Network. She also serves as secretary, membership chair, and then the president of the Golden Valley Rotary Club. Um, she also, I think, um, in the past six months, did a great job as serving as the COVID-19 Initiative Food Distribution Manager for over 30 locations. Um, we are excited um, to have Colleen aboard. I also want to thank um, Commissioner Schulte and Commissioner Bradstead and Commissioner West, who are part of the selection committee, along with the library board. Um, during our selection process, it took us um, quite a few selection processes to go through, but I think we came up with a good candidate. I believe Colleen will do a great job, and I look forward to uh, working with her. And Colleen, if you'd like to step up. Mr. Chair, Commissioners, thank you so much um, for approving my position. I am thrilled. I am grateful for this opportunity um, to continue to use my skills. Um, uh, and I really, uh, my passion for the community um, and enhancing and improving and impacting and finding what the needs truly are and to be able to do it in my own community, I'm thrilled. Um, and I really do look forward to getting to know all of you and also really strengthening the 
um, library um, and the county um, and work together to figure out, uh, to find new ways and um, how to strengthen and make um, us stronger. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Colleen, and, and welcome. Yes, thank uh, you. We hope it's a very welcoming experience as you get settled in your new job. You. Um, you do have big shoes to fill. We had some great library directors here in the past, and, and as stated before, Patty Hetrick has done a, uh, a fantastic job in the interim, uh, keeping the, uh, not, keep, not just keeping the facility open and functioning, but uh, helping it grow and, and become stronger. And we think you'll be a valuable addition to the team, and we look really forward to working with you and doing just like you said, uh, strengthening that bond between the library board and the county board and, and how we all work together. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Colleen. All right. Has this resolution been offered yet? Mm -hmm. Yes. It has. So we have a resolution before us. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? And that passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Welcome, Colleen. Uh, next on your agenda is to consider approving a contract, which is the employment agreement between Colleen A. Hobner, the Anoka County Library Board, and the County of Anoka for services as library director. Is there a motion to approve the contract? So moved. A motion by Commissioner West. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Meisner. Is there further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. And that item passes. Congratulations and welcome aboard, Colleen. Next, we'll move on to item 11, which is committee appointments. And first, we'll consider reappointing or appointing the following individuals to the library board for three year terms ending December 31st of 2023. First is reappointing, reappointing Richard Orpin, representing District 1, as recommended by Commissioner Look. Second, we'll be appointing Carol Fast, representing District 3, as recommended by Commissioner West. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Look. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner West to approve those two to the library board. Any further discussion? I will just have a quick moment just to thank them for their work on that board, uh, both past and present and future. We appreciate their work. It's not always an easy job. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner West. I just wanted to comment that um, my appointment is well acquainted with Matt in his teenage years. She was his English teacher. And she's still willing to work for us. That's what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Luck. Mr. Chair, I think she'll see all of me of that information from getting out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, good to know. It's sealed. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That item passes. We'll next entertain 11B, which is to consider reappointing Ron Ronald Bolton and Eva Knutson to the Minnesota Extension Committee for three-year terms expiring January of 2024. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I'll move. I have a motion by Commissioner Gamash, second by Commissioner Meisner. Is there further discussion? Mr. Chair. Seeing, oh, Commissioner Look. Sorry. Mr. Chair, I just wanna comment on both these individuals. I've had the opportunity to work with them and uh, both are extremely dedicated to the Extension Committee, working very hard, always there always contributing in a positive way and helping out wherever they can. So it's, it's good that they want to uh, be considered again for reappointment. And um, I, I'm happy because they do a great job. Thank you, Commissioner Luck. Any further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And that will pass unanimously. 11C will consider reappointing Walter Cleeth to the Board of Adjustment for a three-year term expiring December 31st, 2023. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Look. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Brasted. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That will pass unanimously. 11D is to consider reappointing Don Jonas 
to the Personnel Board of Appeals for a three-year term expiring December 31st of 2023. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Brasco. Is there a second? Second. I'll second it. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That will pass unanimously. And again, we'd like to thank all these uh, commi commissioners, committee members, uh, board members for all the work they do. It's, uh, it's, I won't say a thankless job because we're thanking them now, but it's uh, certainly hard work and the pay is not great. This is, uh, in fact, most of them work without pay, just ba basically a per diem or travel expenses. So thank you for all your dedication to Anoka County. It is truly appreciated. Next, we'll move on to item 12, which is the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Securities Act, or CARES Act items. And we'll start with consider accepting $997 in additional CARES Act funds and approving the reimbursement of previous expenditures related to COVID-19 health pandemic with CARES Act funds in the amount of $21,619,322. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Brasted. Is there a second? Second. Second, no. second by Commissioner Reinert. Is there further discussion? Commissioner Reinert. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this particular one, the $997, is, is because of the funds coming back from the city of Nell then? That's correct. Correct. Okay, and then, and then we then have to absorb it and then um, itemize it. Well, okay. Corey. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if I may, my name is Corey Camp. I'm the Finance and Central Services Division Manager. Um, what's happening here is we are coming full circle, um, closing out our CARES Act money. And so because we initially accepted everything in the beginning, and then we've done all these CARES Act items to show where we've been spending the money, this is to kind of culminate the whole act of the CARES or the everything we've done with CARES Act over since July, since when we put this in. And so what you're seeing before you is this action will actually say, okay, and we are now reimbursing ourselves for the salaries that we've been talking about, which are many our public health um, and public safety salaries. And we are also, you know, anything that didn't get captured in a previous CARES Act, you know, resolution is listed here. And so this kind of just comes in full circle and does it. And then we have three resolutions following, which are the amendment resolutions from our, our initial resolutions in July to set all the categories up. And so now we're finalizing all that. So that's what this is today. So, Thank you, Corey. Right. Further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. And that item passes unanimously. Next, we'll go to item 13, where we'll consider a resolution amending the allocation of coronavirus aid relief and, and economic security act funds, known as CARES Act funds, to the economic recovery activities category. Is there an offer of the resolution? So moved. The resolution has been offered by Commissioner Meisner. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. And that item passes unanimously. Item 14 is to consider a resolution amending the allocation of Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act funds for safety net activities category. Is there an offer of the resolution? I'll offer it. I'll offer the resolution. Resolution's been offered by Commissioner Brasted and Commissioner Gamash. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Seeing and hearing no further discussion, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Reinert. Aye. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brasted. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. And that item passes. Item 15 is consider a resolution for the CARES Act funding to local government activity category. Is there an offer of the resolution? I'll offer the resolution. Commissioner Gamash has offered the resolution. It's now before us. Is there further discussion? 
Commissioner Meisner. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to take a moment to thank Corey and really the entire uh, CARES Act team here at Anoka County. I mean, the the magnitude of actually allocating all of these funds and doing it in the timeline, doing it all correctly, is is really impressive. So I I can't even imagine the work behind it. Um, thank you. It's a timely comment in that we're wrapping up our reporting of this, but uh, something tells me we haven't heard the end of this. We're going to hear more about, well, a subsequent CARES Act. It'll probably be called something completely different. But this has been a lot of work for a lot of people, and they've stood up at a time where most people were cowering and stepping back. Uh, and this team has done yeoman's duty to make sure that we did this in a very fiscally responsible way. And we had our auditor involved every step of the way to make sure that when the state steps in to audit this process, that we are fully protected and that the allocation of dollars was prudent and proper. Um, again, it was uh, a really big task. We asked a lot We asked a lot of our department heads and leads and our administrator, frankly, uh, and Corey as uh, chief of finance to really step up and do this project. Uh, I'm proud of them. I'm proud of Anoka County for the way it was handled and, and all of you as well. Um, I've read a lot, of, a lot of comments from other jurisdictions that are less than favorable about how they went about spending their dollars. Uh, and they will be scrutinized in years to come, we know that. And, and I'm confident, beyond all confidence, that we've done it right, and that's important. That's integrity, and this county shines when it comes to integrity. Um, that concludes my comments. Any other comments? Seeing none. This is a roll call vote. Commissioner Look. Aye. Commissioner Brastad. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner Schulte. Aye. Commissioner Meisner. Aye. Commissioner Gamash. Aye. Commissioner Reiner. Aye. And that item passes. That concludes our agenda for today. Is there anything else to come before the county board? Commissioner Meisner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, we're. <laughs> We're not able to uh, gather and celebrate during the, the <coughs> pandemic here. So I just wanted to take, a, again, a moment to wish um, all of the staff and residents and all of my <coughs> colleagues here a happy and safe holiday season. It's been a very interesting and challenging year, and I look forward to seeing 2021. Thank you, Commissioner Meisner. Seeing nothing else to come before the county board, we are adjourned. And those of you serving on the... HRA.